Have you ever wondered if you can get a building permit for an aircrete dome? Well, in this video, we're gonna go into great detail on the subject, and we've got an exciting discussion with Lance Martz from PSE Engineering. They're an engineering company that specializes and does a lot of work with non-traditional and alternative building materials. So stay tuned. I think we're gonna answer a lot of your questions. What I wanted to ask you was, you know, basically like where does somebody start? Because I know we've talked about this, right? Like there's, it's not just a simple answer necessarily. And there's kind of like, a bit of research a person needs to do to kind of figure this out, but even probably before they involve us or you. The golden question to ask their building department. If they absolutely have to have this building engineered for their location, um, there is a golden question. Ask the question, and then I'm going to be honest with you, with you shut up. And here's the question. I want to build an aircrete structure. If I have this professionally designed, engineered, and stamped, will you give me a permit for it? And shut up. And listen. <laughs> you give them too much information, they'll start doubting if they don't know anything about the product. Right, right. If they say yes, and you're gonna find this a lot, if you're straightforward with them and say, if I give you professionally stamped and engineered plans for this structure, will you permit it? It's very straightforward. It doesn't seem like you're not hiding anything, you just ask them exactly what you needed to know. If they say yes, great. Try to get it in writing. Yeah. Then get it engineered. Then get your permit and start building. Yeah. You know, it doesn't do you as excited as excited as the client is about the structure. The building department is not. Right. They don't care one way or another. They want to make sure that whatever guidelines they have in place in their locality are observed. Yeah. Uh, your building is safe and that no one's going to die in it. Yeah. You know, so as long as you have covered all that with the engineering, which engineering ensures the safety of a building. So that's why you engineer, you're covered. And the more people that learn to approach their building departments in this way and get positive answers, the more widespread the use of aircrete will become. Yeah. More Dome Gaia type buildings will flourish. Yeah. And more mainstream aircrete will be. Yeah. So I love that. That's a very good, concise question. We'll write that down and probably put it in the video description because <laughs> it's very specific and I like the way you worded it. A little, a little bit hard line to say, to ask the question and stop talking. But Well, it's, no, it's, I think it's a good point because sometimes too much information just confuses the situation. And like you said, the building department's really trying to see where you fit. You want to do an alternative building. The interesting thing from what I've heard, you know, the feedback that I've received from our clients is I would say more and more building departments are getting used to handling alternative buildings. Some of them actually are excited about it. Like I, I talked to a client uh, yesterday that was saying their building department, they said what they wanted to do. They even showed them the designs and they're super excited. But like you said, they're like, well, but you got to, you know, bring it. You got to bring us a stamped approved um, engineered design. If you can do that, they were Again, like super excited about the idea of it. A lot of counties are trying to solve affordable housing. So, you know, I, I'd say like, you know, in the past, it was way more difficult. The rules might be tighter in some cases, but there's just a little bit more willingness sometimes. But so kind of to summarize, my understanding is there's like basically two different camps that counties or building departments are going to fall into. One is they're going to say yes to your question. And then as long as you're confident in that yes and ideally have it in writing and you understand their process, that's all they care about. They just want to know that you can build whatever you want. You just have to, you know, have it engineered. And then the other camp is going to be maybe a no or maybe a maybe or a gray area. Do you have any advice on that scenario? So I have those clients as well. And I, I generally ask them to do one of two things. Call on another day. Maybe you'll get someone else. Uh, maybe that person who answered the phone or the person you had a meeting with has been there for 45 years and he is hell bent for stick framed and concrete rebar and reinforced everything and nothing exists outside of the mainstream or on maybe on maybe you call him on another day and you get the newer guy who's super excited both have the same weight but depending on the guy that you talk to you're going to get a different answer yeah so that's an absolute possibility. So maybe some of that is don't necessarily take no for an answer. Maybe oh, call back, you know, because like you said, yeah. 
So the other thing that I also tell people is if you get a no, you have two choices and you only have two choices. Change your medium and build with something else or put on your gloves and get ready for a fight. Right. You know, and it can be as simple as calling every day until they're just absolutely sick of you and you can prove your point yeah. or just a flat no. And then you tell them, cool, I'd, I'd love to pay taxes in your county, but if you're going to be like this, I'm going to sell right. that property and move somewhere else. And I think part of this is also where your own research really would come into play. Like you can you can look at the county zoning rules. You can look at their building permit guidelines. Most rural counties don't have their own specific guidelines, but some of them might. So, you know, they may just be adopting a broader guideline, which could have provisions for alternative methods. If you're in a city limit, more than likely you're out of luck unless it's a special city, because cities often have very specific guidelines and like sometimes even to the color that it can be. And, you know, obviously HOAs and things like that. So we're really talking about at the county level. So a lot of that is look and feel as well. So if a county is looking to have a more upscale looking standard, futuristic look like big square yeah. boxy everything, well, domes don't really fit into that. So you may want to buy a different plot of land, move outside of city limits, go a little more rural. You may still be able to do it as long as you're not within their master planned area. You know? Yeah, and I think that's that's a really important point in terms of just knowing where you are. I know, like, you know, if you're trying to build in one of the counties here, you know, your neighbors have a say in it. You're, it's just, like, don't even try. But there's lots of other counties where it's very open. Um, actually, speaking of neighbors, I think neighbors can play a pretty big part in this as well. And so this is another sort of option for people because, and I don't know if you have any experience with this, but my experience with a lot of the enforcement at the county level has to do more with neighbors than anything. Mm -hmm. So Any you know, it's like, neighbor? if you don't have neighbors or you have neighbors that are really on board with what you're doing, oh. you actually are probably fine. You know, you still, my advice is still follow an engineered design, still do everything legit so that you, you know, could qualify for a permit, but you might not even need to worry about the permit if you're in that kind of county where it's really just more of an, um, you know, as long as you don't piss off your neighbor, basically. Um, and this is not just coming because from working for an engineering firm as I do, but I can't agree with that because you may build this thing and you get a new neighbor who is not happy with what you did. That's true. Yeah. And then a month from now, here come the bulldozers. No, yeah. that, no, that's not worth it. It's absolutely worth going. If they require a permit, get the permit. If you have to tweak somebody's ear, or bother them enough until they say yes, whatever it takes to get that permit. I think that is probably the better advice. Um, you don't want you somebody know. to tear your stuff down. I wanted to, another thing I wanted to say is, Aircrete is super flexible as far as the possibilities that, that you can use it with. Sometimes you're gonna have to be just as flexible. Yeah, yeah, and, and there are things like we, I think even in our designs with working with you guys, um, we have backup plans, right? Like, so if the county says, no, we don't like, even though the engineer approved this, we're not comfortable with it. There's certain things we can do to basically make them comfortable with it. So, right. you know, right. so Depending yeah. So, the location, you may have to use a little bit of rebar. You don't want to, but again, flexibility. Yeah. We can add some in. We have other alternative materials to rebar that, you know, have right. similar qualities that we can use. So like there's, um, you know, we have a whole kind of plan there, but, um, but yeah, definitely research. The other thing I'm going to mention too is besides building permits, it is important for people to research their zoning as well, mm -hmm. because not just like, because the zoning has a lot to do with like how many buildings you can have, what size, some zonings will have a minimum square footage for your building. Um, so understanding what zoning you're in and how that then relates to the building code, those two things are, are pretty important. I don't, I don't know if you have any comments on that. I know you guys deal more specifically just with the permitting process. So we deal with jobs that are nationwide. Um, we worked overseas. We work in territories. We work in Canada. There is such a massive difference between building departments. You can have yeah. Uncle Joe Bob's permitting shack over here and then massive freaking uh, building department over on the other side, you know? So, and yeah. the there's just a massive swing of requirements. So yeah. 
telling everybody that such and such is it is so it's not necessarily true yeah and actually to that point even with zoning like if you have agricultural zoned land that doesn't mean it's the same rules as another county with agricultural zone land so every county will have its own zoning requirements so and that's depends, just something the zoning is something that sometimes gets overlooked by and people depending on the city or the locality you're working on they may be interested in such a thing and while you're not in a in an area that is zoned for a certain use they might be very interested in doing it anyway true yeah you know yeah. so you could have ag land that's bordered by an area that's known to be uh, full of art and art, you know, artists, right. but it's ag land and it works with that. So they may permit it, you know, you never know. Yeah. I used yeah. to, once upon a time I lived in uh, Tucson, Arizona, and there was a bunch of agricultural land bordering an area that's known for, it's just a little sort of half a township area and it's just full of artists. And I you can look at things that have been created, you know, yeah. So, I mean, such places do exist. And then I'm curious to kind of maybe to walk me through what like the, the rest of the process looks like. So they say, yes, you basically, you know, work with us however you want, get your design in place, either use one of our standard designs, which speeds your process up or, you know, do something custom, work with the engineer, you know, to get it all. So you have stamped plans now. Now to get the permit and, and my, and I know this is out probably outside of what you guys deal with, but I'll just mention is, you know, you probably will need other things like a site plan and probably like soil tests for if you need a septic system, like there can be a bunch of other stuff that you need before you get the permit. Is that true? Or can you just get the permit for your building? Depends on the locality. Number one, okay. if you're not going to be connected to a sewer system, you're going to need a septic system. That's not something we do, but there are people out there that do it. And that's not a problem. If you need a site plan, that's something we can absolutely do. Um, if you need a site plan, we're going to need topography. We're going to need a report on the area. Yeah. Um, because we have to physically see what where your property is, what's around your property, and then we have to understand setbacks and positioning. So you have a property line. How far back from that property line do you have to be? That's a setback. And then how do you want to position it? You know, how do you want it turned on the property so you get that view? A lot of folks that build some of the absolutely gorgeous structures that you've designed, view is going to be everything. It's going to be view looking at the house and seeing what's behind it as you're, dry, as you're coming up to your home. It's going to be what it looks like from the inside out when you get up right. in the morning every day and look out your crazy looking awesome domed window. You know, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. You know, or, or stand in your outside shower and, and look at nature. Yeah. Oh, which, yeah. how, how Zen is that, you know? Yeah, no, so, you're right. I mean, that's, that's, that's a huge part of the equation is just the natural environment around these buildings. And that's so we can we're... absolutely do the, uh, the, the placement of the, okay. uh, of the structure on the property. Um, and we usually just flat rate that it's nothing, it's not a real big part of our, of our business. It's something right. we're happy to help people with. Um, I know in the past we've kind of refrained from um, doing the legal makes me not call it architectural because we're not architects. We have home designers, so we call it home design. But literally the only difference between an architect and a home designer is the diploma on the wall. The fact that an architect can do uh, commercial structures and a home designer. We used to stay away from doing um, circular or home design, but I'm being told now that we're getting, getting better at it and able to do that. So if okay. someone has walls and things to do, a dome is going to have walls and things. If if it has walls and things inside, they're not necessarily going to be structural because the dome is the structure. Yeah. But yeah, still, yeah. people need to know where things are. And, and truly, home design is the practice of putting things in a physical space. So how big is this area compared to another area and how does it relate to the whole? Yeah. So that's another service that can, that it can also be done. Nice. Uh, that we have, I don't think we've provided that to you yet, but it's something yeah. we can do for you. If someone's looking to customize the inside of the home further and take yeah. the world one step further than just a shell. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of, I guess what I was thinking, there's probably two different or maybe, you know, a spectrum that people would fall on from, you know, the real DIY person that's going to want to do their drawings. You know, obviously they're not going to be able to do their engineering, but they can do everything, their own site plan. They can, 
you know, research all the county rules. They can do all of that. But if a person, you know, is on the other side su- su- and where they're just like, they basically want to hire someone to kind of do most of that for them. How much of it can be done or how much do they need to do themselves? Like, how does that work? I don't see there's a lot of general contractors out there working in Aircrete. No. no. So at the moment, at the present time, I would say 90% or more of this is going to be DIY, you know, owner builder. Yeah. But from like the permitting process, like, do you guys ever talk directly to building departments? Do you do research on the zoning and like for the site plan, you do research on the setbacks Absolutely. and stuff like that? Yeah. We, we have to know every single thing that we engineer, no matter what it is, it could be a shack, it could be a massive shopping center. It has to be able to pass loads. So you have wind, snow and seismic. So right. if you live in Hawaii, there's no snow. There's absolutely seismic and wind. Yeah. You know? <laughs> And lots of I it. feel it every yeah yeah I feel the earthquakes every time I'm there. So and as far as building departments go, Hawaii has some of the toughest building departments ever. They're not easy to deal with. I've overheard several conversations where they're it's rough. It's not the easiest place to deal with. You know, it's not rural Montana where they don't as long as it's got a couple of a couple of nails in it, it's fine. So that's a good point. So basically everything from the engineering process is going to start with an address essentially, because you need to know where is this located? What's the address? And then you said there's the three factors, the wind, seismic, and snow. Are there any other factors that go into the calculation? And just so people know the, the kind of the, I don't even think you, I don't even know if you know this, but it's been related to me that when a building is designed and engineered, we put it through uh, testing that is completely digital, where we yeah. take the worst known occurrence of wind, snow, and seismic over the past 100 years yep. and en- enact those forces on that building at the same time. No, I do know that because one thing I got back from with our engineer report is about 350 pages <laughs> of um, computer analysis right. with the you know the digital models and all the most of it didn't make sense to me but you could see the 120 mile hour wind loads and you know everything in there and you know all the different forces and how that's going to affect so yeah it was actually pretty pretty interesting to see all that so in order to make sure that we don't design something that is inadvertently unsafe we will go over the top we will beat that structure to death digitally to make sure that it's going to stand and then look for weak points and then, and then here against those. Yeah. I like that. And I mean, it was a lot of very good confirmation for us to find that we didn't need to change our building method that much to still pass, you know, those kinds of requirements. So it's like, that was the big, really the big accomplishment. Um, So obviously we're talking a lot about like a person's first step is research, get to know your building department, talk to them, Um, ask questions, you know, be strategic about what kind of information you provide, be professional. I mean, one thing I know building departments, you know, if you come to them with a, with a sketch of what you want to build on a napkin, they're going to look at you weird versus if you bring professional drawings and engineering. So you just your cousin in with the sketch of the napkin and they say, yes, you're good. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. Um, so yeah, that's I guess a good test to see where you're at. Yeah, and then learning about whatever what other requirements they have. Like there might be septic. I mean, every county, I would say, even if they don't really have building code requirements, they usually have septic requirements and well requirements. So those are things that a person can get in the process in parallel, right? So you can start on all of that. Learn, you know, if you do have to tap into like a, a city water provider or a city septic, you've got to learn about that. Those fees. So. Basically, just get the full picture of everything that you need um, for your area to get start construction on that building. Can you talk a little bit about the process specifically on the permit? So, you know, you've got all this stuff going on. We've got the engineer drawings. You bring them. I guess, you know, it's in the best case scenario, the department says, cool, great, thanks. Here you go. Here's your permit. Almost never happens. Right. They're pro- they might have questions, right? So how, does, how do you handle that? Like, and what kinds of questions do you think they might have? So they'll, they'll have certain, they're going to have a lot of questions if they don't understand the medium. Some of the cost of engineering is set aside to answer those questions. Right. I, I'll explain to folks a lot of times when they come to me for engineering for non-standard construction, 
for, I mean, because there's a lot of different non-standard construction we do because we're committed to the whole sustainable thing, but it's, it costs more to engineer this. You're not saving money engineering aircrete. You're saving money in the construction, but engineering is such a small percentage of your build cost. If in standard construction, say stick framing or concrete or steel, engineering is a tiny little percentage of your total build cost. In, in aircrete construction, it's a much bigger percentage because your construction cost is so much smaller. Yeah, relative to the size of building. Yeah, and but overall, you're not saving money on on engineering. You're saving it on the construction side. Right. So, and I mean, one thing I will add to that, just so people understand what we're working on, is because we are working on you know these more standardized designs to streamline the engineering like the initial round of engineering that we went through was pretty expensive because it was this totally non-standard thing but if people follow our standard designs and building practices you know we're basically working with you to bring those engineering costs down so they're more similar to a standard um, you know standard kind of home but obviously if someone's going to do something really wild uh, and you can always do that you can use different you know mixtures of materials and um, you know, you can use aircrete in all kinds of different ways and configurations and shapes. Then, you know, I get asked a lot, like, well, we want to build a dome, but we want to bury it underground. I'm like, that's cool, but you're yeah. definitely going to want that engineered. And I know that's, you know, that's going to take a lot of thought and calculation. Yeah. <laughs> so let's not go, let's not go off on that tangent, what but just as an example, really? but if you're following a standard thing that we all know about, then it's a lot more efficient. So they're going to um, probably find themselves using a lot more standard concrete if they're burying it, you know, just yeah. because the, the earth is heavy yeah. and, it, and yeah, it, you've got it. It exerts yeah. pressures from all sides. Air yeah. creates a great medium and it can exist great above ground, but it would literally get destroyed being underground unless yeah. you protect it somehow. Then what's the point? Plus the whole beauty of air creep in the domes and how the finishes can look. Why would you hide that? It, right. makes, it makes little sense. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, we get asked all the time of like all the things that people can do with air cream. Like, can we build a septic tank or a water cistern? And it's the same thing. It's like, well, why would you do that? There is no actual practical reason. So air cream, when it's used correctly, is a beautiful material, but you've got to, you've got to know when and where not to use it. Mm -hmm. So I guess what I want to know a little bit more detail is like that process of Q&A with the county. So, I mean, what are they going to ask or how do you guys handle that if they're, you know, asking questions or just maybe seem uncertain, I guess. How do you reassure them? There's no real way to know what they're going to ask. Uh, they can have, they can take any kind of issue or all kinds of issues with the engineering process, but those calculations, as long as everything is above board and it's proven, right. at some point an engineer's word is, oh, I hate to say that, but word of God, you know, like, yeah. like that kind of thing. Like I'm putting our professional opinion on the line with this stamp right. uh, to say that it's safe. And if we've taken a job on, it's our mission to convince that building department of everything that we stated. And that's a good point too. When you're putting a stamp on a plan, I mean, you're basically, your company is assuming liability, right? Oh, like that's liability. That's why yeah. a lot of times some jobs will just be all, we're out. We can't do that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've got a client right now who wants to do something really weird with shipping containers and I will, um, they're going to open up like a flower, man. Yeah. You, know, you just can't do that. Yeah. Another thing I, I would, just, I want to add something else to my understanding of the engineering process as well, because we talked about how, you know, you do all the digital calculations and all of that for load, but that's not the only consideration that you're taking into account. One of the other big considerations is what the building departments generally do approve. And so I know from talking with your engineers, you know, like, they're like, yeah, technically you could probably pass the load calculations without this one component, but we know that the building departments are going to freak out just because that's too outside. So it's easy for us to add in a certain component or a certain feature in the design that we kind of know will satisfy them, even though from our perspective, it's overkill, but it doesn't really add much expense to the building process. So we are trying to factor that in when we're doing these designs and, you know, creating the methodology. And that's and, experience, you know, that's just experience dealing with multiple different building departments. Yeah. Um, no. So if I put a header in here and the buildings, the building department sees that they're going to get super happy. You get enough happies on one side and the negatives start falling away. 
you know, then you get an overall good feeling for the safety of the structure and your chances are you're going to get permitted. Yeah. And the more, you know, the more clients we get permitted with these designs, the more feedback we'll get from building departments and, you know, we'll, we'll know more and more. So that'll be exciting to see, you know, as time goes on. Another thing that I think that a, a lot of, a lot of you, your client, your company, as well as clients could do, uh, especially if you get people that are super fired up about Aircrete, just call building departments, start asking questions. The more times yeah. I hear the word Aircrete, the first time the guy hears Aircrete, he's probably going to say no. The 150th time he hears Aircrete, he knows something's coming, coming along. Yeah. Like, you know, something's going to happen and he's going to have to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. And I've heard of that happening. Like in Australia, um, there's a group there. Some of our students, you know, started their a bunch of construction and it's starting to spread in Australia and um, they've got them approved through their building departments. And once they got the first one approved, then, you know, in the same area, they can go, well, you know, Hey, there's one that's already built. And then the guy can go, Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. You know, like that, it's dominoes. Yeah. And so that's what we're hoping is going to happen, you know, more in the U S is as we get more permitted examples and engineered designs, it'll be easier to prove that this isn't just a theoretical thing. Um, Most building departments don't want to be the first. Right. So, and it's something else that clients can take with them. We don't have the manpower to do this, but perhaps you could, if you were to be able to can somehow put together a database of people who had their plans approved and got yeah. permits, and start providing a list of these are the locations we know where they're okay. You know, and we will definitely do that. So, you know, depending on when a person is watching this video definitely check with us if you're interested in getting a permit and we'll be able to you know, share some of that information. You could literally help push those dominoes over. Yeah. And yeah. put dominoes next to other dominoes so it keeps going. One of the kind of just to circle back on something when we were talking about the building department and maybe questions or, you know, like you said, like, well, we don't really understand this. We're used to a very different type of structure and a very different type of thinking about how structural engineering works. From my perspective, you know, domes and aircrete domes are actually structurally much simpler than a typically framed house. But they're just, it's not, it's so uncommon that it's, you know, it, it takes an engineering company like you guys to understand it, to think about it in the right way. But if you think about like a stick frame house, especially if it's multi-storied or whatever, you have all these different loads with you know, pressure points, you have corners, you have headers, you have all this stuff. So there's a lot of things to calculate when, you know, wind hits one side of it. And in a, in a dome, the load is, is pretty even. It's, you know, you don't have headers, you, you have a very evenly distributed structure. So it's, it's actually a lot simpler. But again, the building departments might not understand that or see it that clearly. So one of the things that we've tried to, to do to really educate people is understanding that really aircrete building is not aircrete building. It's aircrete's just one component and it's actually a composite material that you're making. So because we're basically using aircrete and we're wrapping that with fiberglass and stucco layers to give it essentially what's like a surfboard. You know, that's well, that's the way I explain it is, you know, inside of a surfboard is a foam core. It has fiberglass on the inside and outside and a surfboard is super strong. But if you remove any of those layers, fiberglass by itself is just super bendy and flexible right. and foam will just break. Mm -hmm. But when you put them together, you know, the strength of the com combination of the materials is exponential versus, you know, if you take each one by themselves. And so, and that's different because, I mean, you do get that effect with a stick frame house, you know, if it's just the framing and then when you add the plywood, you know, that gives certain rigidity and you add drywall and that gives it some more rigidity, but it's just different way of thinking about it. And so to get that concept through, because if people just think about aircrete and they say, oh, this is pretty brittle, this breaks pretty easily, like you can't build with that. If that's all you were building with, you know, they're probably right. correct, but the, it's the sum of all of the parts that make the structures really strong and be able to pass um, all these kinds of requirements. I have another question because I don't know if you and I've talked about this so much and it's not something that we do, but it's just something that the client, a lot of the clients need to have done. Like I don't see like say California adopting it anytime super soon just because they're so heavily regulated. Mm, um, totally. But uh, certain States require energy calculations yeah, and uh, manual J and title 24 and all these different yeah. things. 
Yeah, I was going to bring that up. That's a good point. And there has to be a way to make sure at some point after the engineering process is done with us, fairly certain that you're going to have to at least um, have some uh, energy calculations done on your standard wall. Yeah. Yeah. Not the whole home necessarily. It's like if I build with this method using these layers assembled in this way, what is the energy calculation on our wall? Yeah, that's a good point. There, there are some pretty good, you know, resources for lab testing of different commercial aircrete products, you know, for our value insula- insulation value. Uh, but we are planning this year to send our aircrete formulas through some of those labs and get some of those numbers, and that's going to help as well. So we'll combine, you know, the engineering that you guys have done with more of the lab testing on the material itself, mm-hmm. and I think. You know, you add all that together and, and that's going to help a lot because we'll have a much more, you know, legit information and and testing behind the materials. Man, I'm super excited for that. I'm so proud of you guys for pushing this thing through. <laughs> yeah, so well, we're getting I'm, I'm really done. excited to see where this is going for you guys. Well, likewise, you know, a lot of work to do. I think there's going to be a lot of, a lot of questions, so I'm sure we'll be doing some follow-up. Um, but I hope this information is enough to get people really understanding some of the process. And, you know, as, as, as we get more feedback from our community, we've got a pretty tight community. So people share a lot of this information on our, you know, on our forums and stuff. So if anyone's, you know, wants to get more current information, I'd tell them to, you know, jump into our online community and, you know, ask questions, share your own experience and reach out to to all of us. I think it's just really important for clients to remember that, just because there's a problem after you've sent your plans in doesn't mean it's it's over. It doesn't mean there's anything other than somebody just doesn't understand something. And it's not it's not their, your client's job to make them understand it. It's our job. Well, that sh- should hopefully give people some peace of mind. Hopefully. The biggest thing at all, of, of everything is if I give you engineered stamped plans, will you permit this? Number one thing, if it's yeah. yes, go, go, go. Thanks for watching. I hope this answers a lot of your questions about getting building permits for aircrete domes and also just any alternative building material in general. If you have any questions that didn't get answered in the video, feel free to leave a comment below or also you can join our online community over at domegaia.com where you'll also find lots of blog articles and other information and technical details about aircrete and resources that can help you get started if you want to know more. Thanks so much.